right, before we take a look inside, I do want to spend a moment talking about static protection. The outside of the computer is an all-metal case, and so if a static discharge hits the chassis, it wraps around, it hits everything simultaneously. There's no um, static damage caused to the delicate components. The moment we open this and we start to touch the motherboard, we actually create the ability to pass static electricity across to sensitive components, damaging them. In my visit with Intel last week, they conveyed to me that for every NUC that simply NUC returns that's non-functional, they get 1,000 from do-it-yourselfers. And in their failure analysis, they tracked most of these failures to static discharge, particularly to the DIMMs. So uh, someone has the bottom off, they have a dim in their hand, they have a static buildup on their body, and as they go to put the dim in, they're actually discharging static across to the dim socket into the processor and damaging the processor. And uh, they basically said to me that if, if these do-it-yourselfers would buy their systems from system integrators such as Simply NUC, they would see a 1,000-fold reduction of failures. So if you are going to do this yourself, please make sure to use uh, static protection, static uh, processes in your assembly. Otherwise, let a system integrator such as simply NUC. All right, with our static protection message now covered, I want to go ahead and take off the bottom. And the first thing I noticed is the SATA drive power uh, connector has moved and it's made it where it's more difficult to fold the bottom plate out of the way so that you can put the DIMMs and SSD in uh, without really this being in your way. So I'm going to go ahead and unplug the connectors, try to grab them by the connector housing and not the wires, and go ahead and fold this out of the way. We'll take a quick look at the drive bay. This takes two and a half inch drives up to 9.5 millimeter thick. They would just slide in there, plug in, and then a screw can be used to hold them into place to secure them. Uh, we would probably put the drive in and then after the DIMMs and SSD are put in place then come back and plug the drive bay in. So we're going to cover that and then the next thing I want to cover is this I.O. panel. This is a new expansion I.O. panel. So this uh, plastic piece can be removed and behind it is a DE9 punch out. So this punch out can be removed and a serial cable uh, installed to give you access to the internal serial port. The entire plate can be removed with these two screws and a new plate put in its place that holds other I.O. options and then those I.O. options would plug into the internal USB 3.0 or the internal USB 2.0 or perhaps other connectors. I'm going to um, do a shoot another video where I go further into the motherboard, but I wanted to get these two out of the way. We're going to cover the both the external and internal connectors. One thing I do want to note is that on the power button, that this is a passive button that has a light pipe and it's captured. So there's not, not actually a switch here. This is just a, a post with a light pipe for the power indication. So on the motherboard, there's actually a micro miniature power switch in the vertical position with an LED in front of it and a there's the plunger. So that's the actual power button and there is an LED there to light up the power indication. All right, so let's take a look at some of these connectors. The first one, one we have is the front panel connector here and this is a 2x6 with some pins missing it's a fairly standard uh, pin out and on here you have your power switch connection you have a power LED uh, connector that allows you to drive an external LED or relay solid state relay to power external equipment on when the unit's on there's also a hard or a storage activity LED connections 
so that you can have a LED indicating when the storage is being uh, accessed. There's also a sleep uh, switch and standby uh, LED. And this just follows kind of a standard and this pinout is found in the technical manual. There is a BIOS uh, reset header jumper and uh, this should always be in this position it should never be altered there's really no reason to ever change this um, as we mentioned earlier there's two of the DDR4 dim sockets and these are the 1.2 volt as indicated and you can put in a single four or match pairs up to 32 gig we have our 2.5 inch SATA drive power connector and data connector. And so you saw me unplug those earlier and those go to the two and a half inch drive bay. These two flexible flat ribbon cable connectors will probably not be in the production units. I believe that this one may be going to the embedded controller and this to the processor for probe. And these were used for diagnostic and bring up purposes and won't be present. By the way, this is the trusted platform module. It is the latest revision. This is present on the core i5 version of Dawson Canyon and it is not uh, stuffed, not soldered down. It's not present on the core i3 version. As mentioned before, this is the M.2 um, connector that drives both SATA or PCI Express by four SSDs. These, oh, I missed this one. This one here is a USB 3.0 header. And so this could be used to drive to another USB 3.0 uh, connector, but more likely it will go to internal devices that will drive new IO connectors on the IO expansion uh, port on the back of the Dawson Canyon. So if those devices are USB 3.0 based, they'd plug in here. And if they're USB 2.0, they will plug in to these, one of these two white connectors, or both. These are both USB 2.0. Uh, previous Gen 6 split this into two connectors, where Gen 5 there was a single. Uh, as mentioned previously, these are the two HDMI ports. Uh, this HDMI port actually has the CEC signal is on this connector is uh, wired into the chipset and supported and this one does not have the CEC signal supported it's actually that pin is run over to this connector so for uh, saved a little bit of money not supporting that connector as most people don't need it but if you do need the CEC supported on both connectors simply knock uh, stocks a piece of electronics that plugs in here and adds that capability this is a new connector for the Dawson Canyon. On the Maple Canyon, uh, the serial port was handled by a standard 2x5 100 mil uh, header, uh, pretty industri uh, industry standard. This is a 9 pin, a 1x9. I think it's a 1.25 millimeter spacing uh, for the serial option. So we will be getting some cables made up that plug in here and provide for a standard DE9P uh, serial cable. You can see the radio has the two coax. These are M, uh, MFH4 uh, uh, connectors and we have the coax cables. So we'll flip this over. Let me zoom out and I will take the lid off. so that you can see the two tuned um, dual band antennas. These are what those coax run to. These handle both 2.4 gigahertz and 5, 5.3 gigahertz for the wireless AC. And the Bluetooth uses one of these antennas as well. So this is what we call the two by two arrangement for wireless AC, which gives you 867 megahertz uh, or 800, 867 megabits per second transfer, or what we call gigabit wireless. Um, under this cavity is the blower. 
that pulls air from around the top of the motherboard, blows it across the processor heat sink, and exhausts it through that port. Uh, between this top plate and the motherboard, uh, there is, on the bottom of the motherboard, is an EDP connector. It's a flexible flat ribbon cable for supporting uh, LCD panels. So if you're embedding the motherboard into a device, you can drive a screen directly. There's also a 2 by 2 Molex power connector. So instead of using the DC jack, there's actually a, a lockable uh, power connector that you can plug in and it won't come out. And then the coin cell battery for keeping the real-time clock uh, up to date is uh, sandwiched in between the top plate and the motherboard. There's just a couple of screws that you remove and unplug the antennas to take the motherboard off. So that's our look at the new Dawson Canyon um, H model. Same as the K and kind of giving you a first look at the motherboard. There will be a, another video specifically on the motherboard product that will show you both sides of the motherboard. Thank you.